Okay, hello everyone, welcome. I know this is a tough selection in this track. In the parallel tracks, we have Nilay, Craig, Anna, Sarah, Simon, and his friends. Can it be any tougher? Yep, anyway, you are here, I really appreciate, because this has been a long ride for me as well. Um, besides these slides, I worked on an open source, open sourcing this work, and uh, blog posts that we just shared. Um, it means a lot to me, um, and I hope you will enjoy it. Let's start with a simple question. Uh, you know this on the right, right? Name is Dash. Yes, it's easy one. Uh, do you know this one, the name of it? Yuho, okay. <laughs> so you will see Yuho a lot here uh, during the slides, uh, but I want to start with just released it one hour ago already in 003. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and use it with caution, uh, yeah. But this is supposed to work. <laughs> and then we already have uh, just shared a blog post on our website. This is full for uh, design considerations from uh, product points, uh, design user experience, and also the, from the motion point. Okay, I'm Chatai. I'm Flutter Competence Lead at Vault, also a Google Developer Expert for Flutter and Dart. Although I'm giving this talk alone today, I would like to mention that what I'm going to talk about is a teamwork. Around three years ago, we started working on building this UI component for Flutter, because we have the same component in Android and other apps. <laughs> uh, we started this with our motion designer, Masha, and product designer, Scott. And in these two years, the model sheet that I'm going to present now has been able to solve different use cases. And we scaled our app, we needed more use cases to support. And it will be a long talk, last talk of the day. Let's start without further ado. And today's topic is the model sheet, the model sheet, Vault model sheet. <laughs> Who has seen my slide, uh, tweets about this model sheet? Anybody saw my tweets? I've been okay because I needed to try hard to get more people here considering the <laughs> competition, <laughs> great. Uh, Okay, I will present this UI component from two aspects, design and development. We will start with the design considerations, motion design, and finally, implementation details. Let's start with design. Uh, do we have designers here or magical developer designer? Okay, great, magical developer designers. Uh, let's see if you will find the design part interesting. Before moving forward, I believe it is important to be on the same page. Let me clarify what I mean by model. Model is a UI component appearing on top of the app content. It blocks the previous screen and requires a user interaction to continue. Now let's talk about the common app patterns that most apps follow. First, a page is a model that replaces the entire screen. It can be pushed from right, left, bottom, depending on the context. And then we have model sheets that are used to display extra contact or options overlaying over the current screen. They are ideal for single point of interaction. Users can do something with the bottom sheet or dialog, close it, and they are back in the screen where they were before, so they improve the user experience while staying connected to the current screen. And the final one is, at Vault we have a middle ground between these two, so we want to allow model sheets to have functionality beyond static single views. This is ideal in complex screens, we have an everything app, <laughs> it's complex. Uh, okay, everything app is not in Flutter, but and other apps are complex as well. <laughs> uh, well, model ships uh, allow interacting with individual fl flows inside the screen. This is an example, real life example where we heavily use in our app. Uh, when order comes in, user is able to confirm the estimate that is given to them, calculated by our backend, and also they can, um, um, press the tab button to modify the estimate. In this case, we push them to the second page of the bottom sheet. They can change the time there or realize that the suggested estimate was correct, they go back, and then they're in the first page. It gets more complicated if user wants to do something else than accepting order with the estimated time. Uh, sorry, uh, with more, more than accepting order, yes. Uh, he or she can press the three dots button, which opens a model sheet with more than one full of options. The merchants can tap the call button uh, to call the customers or press the reject button. And then inside this reject button, there's multiple flows as well. So it has multiple flows. I hope it's clear now what I mean by multi-page bottom sheet. 
Um, we will now go through the design checklist for this UI component. This is a powerful UI component, and great power comes with great responsibilities. Okay, there will be cases where sheets might need to be scrolled if the content doesn't fit. And in the worst case, the example is like, in this small screen, you have keyboard jumping up. Like, you have very limited screen, and it should be scrollable. <laughs> Uh, second thing is that you might, want to, you might want to avoid too many changes in the height of the page. For example, in one page, you have tab or segmented control. You switch between the tabs. You don't want to have the interesting heights of each tab. So that should be a fixed height. You still switch between because it will uh, tire the eye. Uh, then the third is uh, the no, uh, navigation flow. Yes, navigation flow is important in multiple page. Uh, it should be crystal clear. We can ensure this with uh, proper placement of the controls. In our de design, we have a sticky action bar in the bottom, and then sticky top bar controls for back and close buttons. When we scroll in the page, the navigation controls should always be visible. OK, we also need to consider the design for, uh, wait. Uh, Yes, designed for different screen sizes, especially for bottom sheets, might look weird as the screen width increases. And uh, finally, we should avoid overwhelming the users with complex tasks in the bottom sheet and consider redirecting them to the original screen when necessary. After giving some background information, we can now start talking about the model bottom sheet, which is an open source package available on PubDev. Uh, it is designed to revolutionize, I say, but we want to have this more common because I really see the value of this bottom sheet. It can solve real problems, real life problems. It's built with world great design quality. We are proud of our uh, design uh, at Vault, and it's extensively used in different apps. Okay. I'm going to show you the features now. And one of the challenges of using bottom sheets, as I said, in larger screens, and in this component, as the screen width increases, we need to do something, right? We have options. One option is adopting the bottom sheet. We can reduce the uh, horizontal space, uh, make it narrow, the bottom sheet. Uh, or we can use alternative layouts, such as uh, sidebars or dialogues. And we choose to use dialogues in large screens and bottom sheets in small screens. It pro uh, the library itself uh, provides a configurable responsiveness, so you can decide what, which layout to show when, so dialog or bottom sheet, uh, depending on the uh, media query width. And then this model sheet, this library can have multiple number of pages. Uh, we provide an example. It has a five pages of uh, flow, demonstrating different use cases here. And by default, each page is scrollable. When the content is longer than the available height, users can scroll to see, to see the more content. Here, please note that although the main content doesn't fit and some parts of it becomes invisible, as the height gets sm smaller, the sticky action bar and the top bar uh, action buttons are always visible. We still want the user to tell you can navigate. This is the action you want to do, although the content is smaller. And then uh, dynamic pagination. Uh, the page list of model sheet can be dynamically updated according to the user input. In this example, when the sheet is visible, user has five options, and each has different list of pages. Uh, this example demonstrates uh, different cases, and I use this as a playground while developing the app. When I do some changes, I make sure it's not broken. I don't have the widget test yet. Hopefully, I will have this. <laughs> Anyway, uh, this example demonstrates a page with force max height, independent of the content's intrinsic height, a page with hero image, a page with a lazily built list, and a page with a text field. Text fields, as I said, is very challenging because we don't control the keyboard animations to sync our animations. Now, my favorite part, I love Navigator 2. Love Nav Navigator 2? Hate Navigator 2? OK? It's a love-hate uh, relationship for Flutter developers. I really wanted to push and pop the model sheet in a declarative way. This library supports both imperative and declarative navigation. As you can see, uh, we push the model sheet and change its page using the browser address bar 
which is only possible with using Navigator 2. And this package includes this example to so, uh, and the source code. Um, Vault model sheet has a built-in motion animation support. We will talk more in details. We will talk a lot of motion design today. This is the first one, pagination. And the second one is scrolling. OK. All the components in this model sheet play a role, important role, giving the context to the user, flexibility to navigate, and explicit action to perform. This should be clear. There is top bar, which serves as an anchor for the sheet. It contains close and navigate back actions. And when the page is first visible, uh, the background of the top bar is transparent. It becomes more visible when the user starts this scrolling. It also has an optional title. It becomes visible when the main page title is no longer visible. We have sticky action bar. We call it sub, like fab. Uh, uh, sub is a clear next step for the user. So it is sticky in the bottom, elevates above, and we can add gradient to make it readable, uh, the, the, the content behind. And we have an optional hero image at the top of the main content to grab the viewer's attention when, the, when they see the uh, page first, they need to understand. This helps the user to give the context about the page. And we have optional page title above the main content. The page title also summarizes what this page is about. Then, of course, the main content that delivers valuable information. It can be scrolled and lazily built. OK, who uses Vault App here? Vault App users, nice. <laughs> You probably noticed that we put a lot of effort to attention, so we put attention to details. Yeah, let's put it this way. Uh, and motion, you see lots of motions in the app, is a fundamental element when building our product. It's not an afterthought, I want to mention. So in fact, it is essential building block for creating a best of user experience. But what is motion design? It is associated with animations that add delight and help the user notice something important on the screen. And these animations are not only some visual treats. Uh, they play a significant part in shaping the brand image and connecting with users on emotional level. Emotional level is important. <laughs> and the benefit of motion design is not recognizable at the beginning. And in fact, it's challenging sometimes when new team jumps in and they un you need to help to, to, um, to understand the, uh, and import, prioritize the work needed for motion design. But one thing more sure, motion design has more broad impact. It significantly contributes to the user experience, and it's part of the brand image and connects the users on a feelings level, as I said, emotional level. And this is a level that users usually notice and note. Sometimes we have interviews when hiring, and they say, I use Vault App, the UX is great. Design is great. We hear this a lot. And motion design also serves as a cognitive aid. So it guides the user through the UI and reduces the cognitive load. It makes uh, easier to understand the most complex products and uh, complex flows. It also helps establishing a special relationships, which we will see more in details. OK, we are going to show you two examples of the motion design, as mentioned before. One is scrolling in page, and the other is navigating between uh, pages. OK, so here we have a page, one page with a hero image, and without the hero image, the other one. And when the content hits top of the bottom sheet, the top bar starts appearing. Here we show the same title, but in a smaller scale on the top bar. Uh, you can have two different approaches here for type title bar uh, when it's appearing. It can be in the direction of the scrolling or the opposite direction of the scrolling. So we came up with a concept in a real life. Imagine that you are reading a newspaper and then you start reading more. When you uh, scroll, this goes down. So it's like this. Uh, and then the next page is the pagination, which is a sequence of screens that the user goes one by one. And uh, naturally, the movement is sideways. Again, we came up with a concept from real life. When you read a book, you go to the next page by swiping from right to left, and previous page from left to right. And similarly, when you go here forward, the next screen comes from the right. And when you go backwards, the screen goes from uh, where it came from. So it goes to where it came from, yeah. 
But it's important to note that the top bar elements here uh, and the sticky action bar, they don't move. They stay persistent and their visibility is only affected with the opacity change. So we ensure a navigation which is smooth and intuitive here. Okay, design talk, enough. Maybe some of us got bored. <laughs> But uh, was it interesting for development point? Are we interested in design? Okay. <laughs> no. But um, from the implementation detail, let's start with the root concept. We have the material app in our Flutter app. It is the root widget which provides various functionalities including navigation. And material app has a router widget in it. It is introduced in uh, Navigator 2 to decouple the navigation logic from the UI logic. And then we have the router widget in the material app, which manages and uh, provides more control over the navigation stack. Um, then um, router widget has a navigator widget, and the navigator widget is responsible of managing the root objects. What is a root? Root represents a screen or a page. And then this navigator widget has an overlay widget, which provides independent layer on top of the other widgets, of course and it can be used to display visual overlays. Uh, finally, roots use overlay entries to represent each screen on the overlay stack, and each root have one or more overlay entries. Why I'm talking about roots? <laughs> because although model sheets overlay on the originating screen, you still see the originating screen. When working with model sheets, many people actually uh, are confused because they forget that they're dealing with a root that is pushed to the navigation stack. So they want to access ancestors of the originating widget. They can't because it's a different overlay entry, different root. Um, but I really like the clever implementation of roots in Flutter. We have root is abstract, and then there is overlay root. It's an abstraction over the interaction between navigator widget and the overlay widget. There's transition root, it abstracts push and pop animations. Model root abstracts blocking interaction with the previous root. Page root and pop-up root, they are the concrete implementations. Page root is for replacing the entire screen and pop-up root for overlaying uh, over the previous root. And what model sheet actually, the library provides a custom root that extends the pop-up root and implements a transition according to the dialog and or the bottom sheet. So when we provide this concrete custom pop-up route, it opens the door for the library to use the Navigator 2 in a declarative way. So you just create a page, and then with your in-depth page route, and you declare, you declare your navigation stack. Um, when building the page here, our page components, uh, we map the world model sheet page class to a widget. So users of the library, they don't have to worry about or concerned about the design guidelines that are mentioned. It's located uh, according to uh, internal implementation. Uh, this helps reusing components and also uh, providing consistency and applying the application's design and brand. Inside the model sheet, uh, we have a scaffold widget. At first, I didn't have it, then I realized it is necessary if you have a keyboard Keyboard needs to push the uh, sheet. It's only possible when you have scaffold. Um, we lay out the model sheet page with the custom multi chart layout. Anybody uses custom multi chart layout? Okay, this is not commonly used, but it is really uh, useful and it gives flexibility so that you don't need to go into the render layer. It's, you, stay st you still stay in the widgets layer, and then you can do the things that render objects do, staying in the widgets layer. How does, uh, how does it do? We will see in the next slide. Uh, we do the layout and positioning in this uh, custom chart layout. We provide minimum and maximum hatch, uh, page height and model page type. It can be bottom sheet or dialog and minimum or maximum dialog width. Now let's see the custom multi chart layout implementation details. So in this case, the children of the custom multi chart layout are the barrier widget and the uh, sheet content. As we all know, you can repeat after me. Constraints go down, sizes go up, and parents test the position. This is the bottom of Flutter. And looking at the delegate of the custom multi chart layout, this tells a lot about what this motto means. The first method we overwrite inside the delegate is the get size method. In this method, the parent of the custom multi chart layout sends its constraints, 
And then the custom multi-chart layout uh, tells its size. So we can set the size of it. It's usually, actually by default, uh, maximum size, the biggest size. And in the delegate, we can decide of the size of the uh, child layout widget use, uh, by overriding this method. Now we overwrite the perform layout method. In this method, custom multi-chart layout itself lays out its children one by one. Once we lay out the child, the child passes its size to its parent, which is custom multi-chart layout, and then we use the child size information for positioning. So again, the motto was uh, constraint go down, size go up, and parent sets the position. Uh, finally, there is this shoot relayout, relayout method, which prevents recalculation of the size information and po uh, positioning. Uh, sorry, yeah. It prevents the relayout rela calculations. So it compares the old widget and the current widget. If they are different, then the calculation is done. Otherwise, we don't calculate this again if no matter uh, in the next uh, frames. Okay, now let's see how Masha hands over the motion specs to developers and how developers make Masha happy. Okay, I must admit that in the beginning, this looks scary and I'm sure you won't see this <laughs> in detail, but this is in the blog post. It's not that scary and it's fun, in fact. <laughs> Uh, Masha knows that she builds the specs for engineers, so she uses variables instead of numbers to represent the height of the components. Here you see the scrolling in pixels in the x-axis, and in, uh, even that, for example, in zero it is the initial position, and as we scroll in the uh, x-axis, it shows the change in the uh, look. So in the y-axis, you see the information how each component scales, translates, and changes opacity at a particular offset. Let's now focus on the motion specs for the hero image only, because we also have the top bar uh, uh, motion specs. Uh, first, the image scales from 1.1 when the image is fully visible, and then it will scale down to one as we scroll. The total change is 0.1, and considering the ratio between the total distance and current scroll distance, we can calculate the scale value at a particular scroll offset. So, then the second change is opacity. Uh, opacity starts changing in the halfway from one to zero. With a similar calculation, we can again find the opacity value at a particular offset. And motion, change, uh, motion design is about changing translation values, scale and opacity, and the rotation of the components. So these are all handled in the paint phase of the rendering pipeline. And we do again with this uh, uh, with the render objects, we can do this. But we still want to stay in the widget layer because everything is widget. Flutter wants to say this because they want us to stay in the Flutter widgets. It's simpler than render objects. So Flutter provides a flow widget here, which delegates the pain phase of uh, the rendering pipeline to its delegate, like we have custom, uh, custom, uh, custom multi-child layout. And then inside this method, we calculate the scale and opacity values according to the scroll position. There is also a should, re should repaint this time. It was should rely out in the previous one. And in this method, we do the painting only when the delegate parameters are uh, different compared to the previous one. If the scroll position is different, hero image height is different, top bar height is different. Now let's see how we implement the pagination animation. So uh, we need the incoming and the outcoming widgets in the widget tree during these animations, of course. And after the animation ends, we don't need the outgoing widgets. Does this sound familiar? We have a widget in Flutter for this, animated switcher. Uh, so um, I tweaked animated switcher for our purposes. Again, we have design from Masha for incoming and outgoing context uh, in this uh, 350 milliseconds. It's staggered animation. And yes, this is the other components. I'm sure you won't be able to read this, but uh, see the blog post. Okay, at first we grouped the incoming and outgoing uh, page components separately. Outgoing page uh, widgets and uh, current page widgets, these are the two classes to clearly separate them. And each page component is wrapped with an animated builder because every specific component has its own animation uh, specs. So we have uh, opacity change, sliding going on, and scale, no, scaling was in the top bar, yeah. 
And transitions of each component happens in this animated switcher stateful widget. When the widget is built for the first time, we add the page without animation. And in the next builds, if the updated widget has a different page index, we determine whether the uh, navigation is backward or forward, and then add the page with animation in the update widget method. And inside the add page method, uh, we first create the new animation controller and set an animation status listener. Then we set the current page components as outgoing page and uh, so outgoing page components. Then start the animation if it is not the first page. Uh, when the pagination animation status is completed, we remove the outgoing widgets from the widget tree. And inside the animated switcher, we have a stack vault model sheet layout I called for current and outgoing pages. Um, vault model sheet layout just positions the each page component for incoming and outgoing uh, pages according to the design guidelines. And as mentioned before, we keep the outgoing pages in the widget tree until the animation control is completed. Then, yeah, I mentioned that we wrap each page component with animated switcher and specify animations according to the specs. And in this example, you see how we uh, wrap the sticky action bar with animated builder according to the specs. Okay. And uh, in this one, um, yeah, I implement this according to the specs for uh, size changes. Uh, again, I do the slide uh, changes here. Here, this slide is a bit complicated and it's the last slide uh, because the problem here is that we have outgoing page widgets and current page widgets. When we want to do the size changes, we really need the information of the outgoing widget. But if you lay out the outgoing page and in the beginning, then you will see that the page height will be higher because outgoing, sorry, in current page is larger. So uh, I use here an off-state uh, off widget. So what off-state widget does is that it has the um, current widgets, but it is not laying out on the screen, but it still calculates the layout information. And I use this layout information to calculate the size ratio during the animation. And that's it. I think this took shorter than I expected. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised that it ended <laughs> in time. Thank you.